Hello everyone, in this video I will show how to get started with ESP32 Kaluga Development Kit. We will start with a short introduction to the ESP32 Kaluga Development Kit. After this we will build a simple application of blinking a LED using ESP IDF development environment, which is an Eclipse-based development environment. After this, I will show you how to debug the code inside the ESP IDF development environment using JTAG interface. But before proceeding further, I would like to thank the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. With more than a decade in the field of PCB prototype and fabrication, they are committed to meeting the needs of their customers from different different industries in terms of the quality, delivery, cost effectiveness, and any other demanding requests. They are one of the most experienced PCB manufacturers in the world. I hope my video's viewers will visit their website once to show their offerings. Now let's get started. First I will share the information about this ESP32 Kaluga development kit. This board is one of the official development kits from the Aspirisif company. The main aim of this board is to demonstrate the human-computer interaction functionalities of the ESP32 S2 controller. This board also supports audio, and with the help of an onboard microphone, one can record the sounds, and with this board, one can connect an external speaker or headphones to listen to the audio files. This board also comes with a 3.2-inch LCD screen, which can also be used to display various graphics on the screen. This board comes with an additional capacitive touch panel, which makes it perfect for the human-computer interface. This board also comes with an additional camera module, which makes this board a powerful kit for computer vision-based applications. The inbuilt JTAG support helps to debug the code in real-time and is much better than traditional print statements. Considering the number of features this board offers for just $55 US dollars is impressive to get started and learn the ESP32 series of controllers. To get more information about this development kit you can visit the shown link or just search Google using the name ESP32 Kalunga Development Kit and you will land on this page. This board comes with all the components which are shown on this screen, and apart from this, they will send one speaker also which is not shown here. On the back side of this kit, there are various jumpers that extend the functionality of this board, like for example, if you want to debug your application using the JTAG interface, then you can move the jumpers 4, 5, 6, and 7 to the on position. Now the next important step is to change the serial drivers using the Zadig software. Whenever you connect the ESP32 Kaluga to your computer, you will get two serial ports. In my case it was COM7 and COM8, but as you can see, now on my device manager screen, there is only one serial port which is COM8. This is because, for the other port, I have already updated the drivers, and that's why it is not visible here. In your case, you have to open the Zadig tool. And then we have to select the option list all devices to see the list of all the connected devices to our computer. And then in the drop down list, we will see two devices named Dual RS 232HS Interface 0 and Dual RS 232HS Interface 1. These are the names of the serial port devices' names due to the FTD integrated circuit present on the Kaluga development board. Here interface 0 is used for JTAG based debugging, while interface 1 is used for serial prints. Here in the Zadig tool, we have to select interface 0 and update its drivers to win USB drivers. It will take some time, but once it is done you will only see one serial device inside the device manager screen. And now we are ready for development and debugging. Now as mentioned previously I will be using the ESP IDF development environment. Here I will create a new project, and just to speed up things, I will take the help of the Blink template project to blink the onboard LED on the Kaluga board. Since I used the template project the main file name is set as blink example main.c, but I prefer the main.c name, hence I will rename it to main.c. If we are changing the names of some files, then we have to also update the CMake text file with the same file name as shown on your screen. The next step is to build the project, but before building make sure that ESP32 S2 is selected, because this is the Esprit if controller present on the Kaluga board. Once done build the project, it will take some time to build the project for the first time, but later build process will be much faster. As you can see the project compiles fine without any error. Now the next step is to program, but I made a mistake. I forget to update the GPIO, which is controlling the LED. On the Kaluga board, it is input output pin 45, which is doing this, 
so I have to update this in the SDK config file. After doing these changes, I will recompile the project to generate the new binary to test on the actual hardware. The compiling is complete, the next step is to program the binary into the hardware, this can be done with the help of the green play button. As you can see that the programming is also completed. Now we can see that the onboard LED is blinking at the rate of 1 second, with some information in the serial terminal window. Now coming to the last step which is to debug the code using the JTAG interface on the actual hardware. This process is very simple because we are using a development environment. The first step is to create a debug configuration, which can be done by clicking on the drop-down arrow on the side of the debug icon, and now we have to click on debug configuration. This will open another dialog, and here we have to right-click on the ESPIDFGDB open OCD debugging and create a new configuration. EIO can click yes here, but I clicked on no, as this can be done later also. And here it also changed the release configuration that is the hello world from ESP32-S2 to ESP32. But as you already know that the Kaluga kit is based on the ESP32-S2 controller, so we have to change it back to ESP32-S2 from ESP32. And this can be done by changing the target property in the debugger tab. Similarly in the config option, we have to select the correct configuration file, which in our case is Kaluga. In the main tab, you can provide the path of the ELF file, most of the time it is automatically detected, but in case not, this can be set manually. The final check is to be done in the startup tab, here we just need to verify if the commands shown here should match with yours, and I guess that's all. Now we can click on the debug button here, or the debug icon from the toolbar, and it should start the debugging session. So our debugging is started, Eclipse is asking to change the view to the debugging perspective, and we have to accept that by clicking on the switch button. Now as you can see I can step in and debug the code line by line, which is very helpful. The same concept can be used for other series of ESP32 controllers, the only difference will be that we have to use an additional debugger module. But my recommendation is to buy such development kits which make our life easier. I hope you find this video helpful, in case of doubts, please use the comment section, and if you like this video press the like button, share this video with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.